out of all of the different fly tying materials that exist on the face of this planet, there are only two that you're gonna use for every single fly. And that's hooks and thread. My name is Alex and I'm part of the team here at Ventures Fly Co. And this is module three of our beginner fly tying masterclass. In the last section, we talked all about hooks. Today, we're gonna dive into thread. Now, because thread is such an integral part of fly tying, we're gonna dive into the weeds a little bit today. But our purpose is the next time or the first time you pick up a spool of thread, you don't have that deer in the headlights, I don't know what I'm doing look, but you're clear and you're confident in exactly what you need. Now, at any point during this video, if you start to feel overwhelmed, just know that at the end, we're gonna bring it all together. We're gonna give our recommendations for beginners. So sit back, relax, and let's learn more about fly tying thread than you ever thought was possible. All right, so today we're gonna go through the ABCs of fly tying thread. A, sizing systems. So to start off, I have a question for you. Why do we need different size threads? So as a general rule, the size of thread that you use is going to be based off the size and the type of fly that you wanna tie. So on one end of the spectrum, you have smaller diameter and lighter weight thread. And on the other, you have bigger diameter and heavier weighted thread. So let's say you wanted to tie some dry flies or some nymphs, you're gonna be on the smaller end of the spectrum, or let's say you wanted to tie up some big terrestrials, some articulated streamers, you're gonna be on that heavier, bigger end of the spectrum. And so let's say you pick up a spool of thread and you're trying to figure out what it could be used for. That's where the sizing systems come into play. And there's two different ones that we're gonna talk about. The first is the OTT system. And this is based off the diameter of the thread. And so the bigger the OTT, the smaller the diameter. So you can see there on the left side, you've got 18 OTT, you've got 14 OTT, the diameters of those threads are going to be smaller than that six aught on the right hand side. And then our second sizing system is the denier system. Now, as opposed to the aught system that used diameter, the denier system is going to be based off the weight of the thread. And for you fly tying nerds out there, a denier is the weight in grams of 9,000 meters of thread. I don't know who came up with that, but we gotta deal with it. And so the bigger the denier, the heavier the weight. So you've got your 70 denier on the left, that's gonna be lighter than your 280 denier on the right. All right, so let's put this into practice and see a real life example. So let's talk about a major thread brand that's Uni Thread. All right, so here I've got some ADOT or 72 denier thread in red, and I'm gonna wrap that around the hook 15 times. Now we're gonna take some six aught or some 136 denier, and we're gonna wrap that around the hook 15 times. And then I've got some three aught, 220 denier thread in purple, and we're gonna wrap that around the hook 15 times. And so you can see that eight aught or 72 denier thread is a lot smaller than that bigger and bulkier three aught or 220 denier thread. All right, hopefully we're clear on the aught and the denier system because this is where things start to get a little bit crazy. So if we're talking Uni, the brand we just talked about, they use both the aught and the denier system. So again, we've got that eight aught that's 72 denier. We've got that six aught that's 136 denier. We've got that three aught that's 220 denier. And so let's say you go on a tying spree and you run out of six aught uni thread. So you hop online and it's out of stock everywhere. So you're like, oh, I'll just get some Danville six aught. We'll call it good. And so if we look at Danville six aught thread, it's actually 70 denier. And so when you're tying with it, it's going to look and behave much more like that eight aught 72 denier uni thread. And then they just decided to leave aught behind altogether. And so their bigger threads are 140 denier and 210 denier. And then UTC, 
they had the same idea and they decided not to use the aught system. And so they have 70 denier, 140 denier, 210 denier, and 280 denier thread. And then Vivis, they decided to go in the opposite direction and they only use aught. So you've got your 16 aught, your 14 aught, your 12 aught, 10, 8, 6 aught. And this is a little confusing because the Danville 6 aught thread was their lighter, smaller thread, but the 6 aught Vivis thread, that's on the bigger end. All right, let's just take a deep breath. And let's talk about what we can take away from all of these brands and how they use the Ott and Denier sizing systems. So we've got two main takeaways. Number one, Denier is a good measure of comparison. And that can be between the same and other brands. So going back to the chart, that Uni 72 denier, that Danville 70 denier, that UTC 70 denier, those are all relatively going to be about the same size and can be used for the same fly applications. And then takeaway number two is that when you have to go with the OTT system, it's better to compare thread from a single brand as opposed to other brands. Going back to that chart, if I took some 6 aught Vivas thread and I compared that with the 6 aught Danville, and the 6 aught uni, they're gonna be different in size and application. But if I just compare the 6 aught Vivis thread with the 16 aught Vivis thread, that 16 aught, it's gonna be smaller, it's gonna be lighter, and that 6 aught's gonna be bigger and heavier. And so comparing those aughts within a single brand makes way more sense. And again, this is probably the most confusing part about fly tying thread. So if you have any follow-up questions, be sure to leave them in a comment below. Now let's dive into the B of our ABCs of fly tying thread. Today, we're gonna to talk about the two most common thread types, which is nylon and polyester. Now there are fancier, more advanced types of thread like GSP or Kevlar or even monofilament, but for our beginner purposes, we're just gonna to stick to the two most common, the two most popular, and that's nylon and polyester. So first, let's talk about nylon. So here I've got some nylon thread. As I wrap it around the hook, notice that it's got a little bit of stretch, that it lays flat, it looks pretty smooth. And then as I build up a little layer, it's got a nice glossy sheen. So those are the main characteristics of nylon thread. Now here, I've got some polyester. And so as I wrap it around the hook, you can see that it's a little more rigid, it's round, it's a little more rough, and it's got a dull matte look. And so those are the characteristics of a polyester thread. And so going back to our common thread brands, We've got Danville and we've got UTC in the nylon column and we've got Uni and Vivis in the polyester column. And so you might be asking, well, Alex, why does that make a difference? Why would I wanna use nylon versus polyester? Why would these brands use different materials for their thread structures? Great question. So our main takeaway here is that thread is a tool, it's not a material. So each thread type can be used for specific purposes. And so when I grab my tying scissors, I'm gonna use them to trim materials. When I grab my whip finisher, I'm gonna use that to finish off a fly. Each tool has a specific purpose. And so as an example, let's say I'm tying up a zebra midge and I want a smooth, even thread body. I'm probably gonna to wanna to use a thread that's flatter and stretchier and so I'm gonna opt for that nylon thread. Or let's say I need to tie down some elk hair on an elk hair caddis. That's gonna require me to crank down a little bit on that elk hair, and so I want a little more pressure, I want a little bit more rigid thread, I don't want it to be super smooth and just slide off the end of that elk hair. And so for that, I might opt for the polyester thread. And then let's say I'm tying up a hair's ear, and I've got some hair's ear dubbing, and so I need to form a dubbing noodle. The rough texture on polyester thread actually makes it easier 
for that dubbing to grip the thread and form that dubbing noodle. But I've said this before, there are no hard set rules in fly tying. You can use polyester thread for every single one of your flies. You can use nylon thread for every single one of your flies. But as you progress on your fly tying journey, just know that using different types of thread is like adding another tool to your tool belt. All right, let's talk about the C of our ABCs of fly tying thread, and that's color. So if you look right here, these are just a few of the tons of different colors of fly tying thread that's out there. But before you go out and you buy every color of the rainbow, here are a few considerations to make. First, 99% of the thread is gonna be covered up by materials anyways. The 1% of the thread that you're actually gonna see is the collar, it's that whip finish. Now there are a few exceptions. You've got hot spots where you purposely wrap extra thread to give it a little pop of color, or you have thread body flies where you're not using dubbing, but you're actually using thread to form the body of the fly, like on a zebra midge. And there might be a few other exceptions, but most of the time, that thread is going to be covered up by materials. You might be asking yourself, so how many colors do I really need? And just as a personal recommendation, I would say the majority of patterns, you can get away with black, brown, or red. But let's say I see a really cool stimulator and it has some hot neon orange thread wraps near the front. If you're gonna tie this pattern a lot, just go get the thread. Or if you just wanna try it out or you wanna save a little bit of money, I've seen fly tires who get a white spool of thread and a pack of Sharpies. And when you get to the end of your fly where you're about to whip finish, you take that white thread, you color it with an orange Sharpie, boom, you've got those orange thread wraps. Now, it might not be as bright or as vibrant as if you were to get that orange thread, but it does get the job done. All right, you're still with us. You made it through the ABCs of fly tying thread. Now let's talk about some beginner recommendations. So if you're just starting out, we would recommend just grabbing some 72 denier, one structure thread in a few different colors. So either nylon or polyester, you're gonna pretty much be able to tie any fly you want to without any issues. In fact, in our material packs here at VFC, we've tried to do just that, keep it simple. We only include one denier, one structure in a few different colors, and they work just great. All right, recommendation number two. As you progress on your fly tying journey and you get this burning need and desire to get more thread and to use it as a tool, definitely come back to this video, watch it as a little refresher, and it's gonna help clarify things when you're ready to move on to that next step. And recommendation number three, the fish care a lot less than your followers or your fishing buddies. So let's say you're on the river and you look over and there's a 20 inch brown trout sipping mayflies off the water surface. You throw a beautiful cast in there, drag free drift. That fish ain't gonna refuse your fly cause it was tied with six aught or 16 aught or polyester or nylon. Oh, I don't eat flies that are tied with polyester thread. Like that ain't gonna happen. And so recommendation number three, those fish, all they care about is that your fly kinda sorta somewhat looks like a bug. All right, hopefully you were able to learn your ABCs and we untangled the confusion surrounding fly tying thread. In the next section, we're gonna take a deep dive into beads. See you there.